Battle control initialized. Hey, hey, people, Five Aces here, and let me hijack you, pun fully intended, into a parallel dimension that is called the playtest. Uh, full disclaimer, this game has been played on my stream live. It was a best of three between two um, distinguished players, and I have seen it before, but I have got, I've got the excuse of having secondhand pregnancy dementia, so I actually don't even remember that, that well what was happening in those games. Plus, I was distracted by chatting with my co-hosts, Sadix Ganon, and so scared. So this is probably going to be a 50% new experience for me, at least a 50-50 coin toss. Let's bring it on. Our two players are fighting over the Dominion in the RHL. And I don't mean the RHL combatants, I mean our RHL organizational ranks. This is going to be the, uh, the match for the top spot in who gets to make the decisions in RHL. JK, we've got two admins here of RHL. This is point one. Spawning in the left as France and his opponent, Ned Naskul, spawning as Ukraine. How very fitting. Only, unfortunately, there's no American faction. Otherwise, point one would have definitely locked that one in because Ned Naskul, definitely IRL Belarus player. So uh, probably closer to the, uh, to the Warsaw Pact side of things than to the Allies. Anyway, let's get this show on the road, shall we? This is, um, this is shared responsibility. Still, I am of the opinion that it produces awesome games. It probably has been nerfed a bit uh, in this playtest. This map has been fallen out of viability. The reason being, those corner derricks. Um, Multi-engineers are no longer a thing. You need one engineer for each tech building right now. Which, by the way, disclaimer, this might be subject to change. SP Shota himself has stated this might just be for the campaign. And we are probably gonna keep the old settings anyway, but this is where we were playtesting. Uh, the, the effects on different maps and this is definitely one that has suffered a bit because the corner there is like who is gonna invest three engineers into something that can be super easily taken out and uh, also three engineers leaves you with less field presence of infantry so you're also gonna be at increased odds of getting sniped getting all your engineers sniped but that was not what was happening here no one was going for an engineer this was a straight up ranger rush for point one also note how you can now see the uh, the vector lines of, of the player's commands. Super awesome. Now allows you to uh, better dive into the minds of players. Now this is something that was a bit of a mistake here from Netnaskul. Building rocket soldiers and they're pretty unguarded. Building rocket soldiers this early when you range when a range is out on the field just means yeah that's just asking for disaster. That spells disaster. Comrade. Comrade Flame Tower guy is being sold off immediately. Yeah. He has served his purpose. So a bit of a, a bit of a slow econ start here for a point one, but he made up for it by sniping two rockets. And as you can as you can see here, the spotter rifle is doing nothing. The spotters, they do nothing. That's a hard macro follow-up here from point one. Plus, this corner Derek might actually be viable because he, if your opponent wants to snipe it, he has to go through your base or be a bit attentive with his rally points. But regardless. A lot of damage onto the uh, onto the ranger early on, which is gonna mean that point one is no longer gonna be aggressive with that one. He's probably yeah, he's just gonna leave it here for a bit of uh, field scouting and lots of infantry coming out of uh, coming out of net, but on one barracks. So still not too crazy of an opener with five harvesters to boot over the four that uh, point one has opted for. So yeah, it really shows. Uh, the econ graph is gonna suffer a bit for both, comparatively speaking to where they would be in a normal game on shared responsibility. Whoops, that's the wrong one. Uh, earnings skyrocketing here for Netnaz school, but yeah, with two oil derricks this would have been a different story, potentially three. Oh, Net took his safe derrick, that's smart. So his eco is gonna boom for a bit until he runs out of money. And uh, yeah, as evidenced by him placing flame towers left, right and center. There is, oh, two spotter rifles. Another one for Netnaskul here. That's pretty good, so he can at least, he at least knows what's up. That's gonna be a, a bit of a move out, medium sized move out. And trying to go for an eco snipe here, but point one, immediately deploying a pillbox, sending back his harvesters. No harm, no foul. Nothing has been happening so far. This push got easily deflected. Light tank follow up for point one. That's a bit spicy. They haven't been changed in the. Uh, in the playtest. Uh, also, by the way, another interesting tidbit. There is another planned change that I, I read about today from Pishodi that is gonna let tanks fire on the move. Let me know what you think about that one right now. I'm of two minds about it. 
but uh, in general I really like the idea because it's gonna make, make mammoth kiting so much easier, you don't have to reacquire a target each time. The turret, sta the turret stays rotated onto the enemy lines, uh, even if you retreat with a mammoth tank, let's say. Um, it's gonna take away a bit of the skill ceiling, but at the same time it's gonna allow for sick plays where you kite with mammoths, you can now kite infantry clubs with mammoths. Um, at least that's what I expect, because we haven't seen that one live yet. Yeah, but I'm hyped for it. I'm still slightly scared that it might uh, lower the skill ceiling, but not entirely sure about that one. You still need to select the targets properly. That's a lot of medics, point one. You can't outheal the PTSD, buddy. Ah, light tanks immediately have done nothing. As per usual, as is customary in open array. It's a tradition, a long time honor tradition, that light tanks be, uh, be useless unless they're built by Gatekeeper. Because he's got like a 200% damage bonus on light tanks, I believe. Uh, written into the statistics. Alrighty, thieves are out for Netnaskul. The artist formerly known as Hijacker. Let's see what they did in this game. I, I actually don't recall, it's the interesting thing here. He probably wants to camp um, both of the ore fields and wait for an unsuspecting MCV. Well, that's pretty cool. And point one has rebuilt his ranger, and usually you do that if you're afraid of a push. His rangers just give you so much line of sight, give it an extra little bit of protection area, and reduce the surface area that your opponent can come from. Four barracks up to uh, is point one. He's going, he's fired up the forges, is going for mass infantry there. And still a, wow, double expansion build. This is an incredibly greedy build from Netnaskul. Not a single tank has been built yet. He's on 45k over 39k before, barely even a shot has been fired. Now starting to go aggressive. Bit of an aggressive stance. But point one has a formidable army. I think he was just waiting for the, uh, for the enemy to push in. So he could actually uh, close the trap here. Ooh! The harvester almost getting blocked off. Retarget from the rockets comes in and snipes the first harvester. More truck. Oh, the other one is just repairing on the on the helicopter. Uh, on the service depot. So cool, he sniped an engineer, but at a premium cost. <laughs> and his other infantry buff did nothing. So combat's tab, probably not exactly Netnaskul's favor here, yeah. It's 8k over 4.5k killed. Yikes. That's looking a bit rough, but at the same rate, he's got two expansions over just the one. Radar dome advantage for, uh, for point one though, so this is gonna be a bit spicy. Hey, the light tank! And proceeds to do absolutely jack squat. Pretty cool. I'm hyped for this. Oh, nice. An engineer. Uh, uh, my mechanic as well. Wait. The husk timed out. Not like this. No. The other one as well. Uh, his, his, gold, his life gold vanished right before his very own eyes. That's unlucky. One more medium tank husk remaining. Yeah, even commented on it. <laughs> right. Two mechanics. Uh, this mechanic, probably not too happy about, about his job right now. Gonna come home to his wife and tell her about the time the husks timed out and it sucked big time. Uh, little, needs to have a little pillow talk and a little, little comfort talk with his wife there. And there is an airfield for Netna School as well. So both transitioning over into a more proactive game style here. After a relatively passive early game, all things considered. And this is gonna be a tit-for-tat push. Top side Net Nuskul, um, concentrating his forces, going in with some density. And bottom side, conversely, there is point one, just amassing forces. By the way, it's not, not always good to have medics in the group, because the medic heal sound, even if Net doesn't see this, he hears that shit. He knows what's gonna be up here. Ooh, hijacker. Yes, yes. Well, thief. It's a thief now. Let's, let's not be politically incorrect. They don't identify as hijackers, they identify as thieves. So there we go. Yeah, bottom side is relatively weakly protected, but still would be better to get a big flank off, but that just takes time. And Ned is moving out with a sizable chunk of his army there. Yeah, here is just targeting the Conyard down. That's not gonna happen, buddy. Immediate infantry reroute, and this is gonna be a two-prong, but it's gonna come at a cost. Gonna come at a premium here because point one now sees the opportunity. He could actually go in. Just two medium tanks would be enough to 
take out, dispose of the entire defensive line. Yeah, two medium tanks plus a couple infantrymen would be all that's needed. A couple camo pillboxes scattered around. Uh, that's yeah, that's a as protection. That's a that's a hijacker deterrent. That's pretty smart. Also, do you notice that? Ah, oh, I love it. Thieves have just become viable. They have just become a thing. As you can see here, it's just lurking. He's lurking to find an MCB. For the big cash rebate there. And artillery is notoriously bad against flame towers because of their small single tile profile. That's gonna be a big push onto the main base. Immediately a harvester down. Helipad down. Hind down. Power down. Oh, pants down. Point one caught with his pants down. Collapse is sure about to follow. But it's gonna come at a cost. It's gonna come at a premium here. Yeah. Eventually getting cleaned up. Hey, at least you get... Yes! The mechanic stole the heavy tank. That's cool. That's a nice little bonus there. And Netnaskul reckless as always with the lives of his yucks. <laughs> yeah, yuck play is a bit of a sensitive matter and not every open array player's forte. Especially if you're just going balls deep. Yeah, yaks are like sniper units, airborne sniper units with very, very low HP. And I don't think that was worth it to snipe a couple of power plants. I think he tried kicking point one into low power. Did he succeed? He did. Yes, that's a big power block, by the way. Oh, tech center out for Netno School as well. This is gonna get a bit spicy here. Where is it gonna deploy it? Ah, there. Bottom side. Okay. Okay, point one still has a sizable economy, and keep in mind, um, Net Nazgul hasn't mined from this uh, from this patch here because it was mostly contested by the artilleries plus the stationary forces. So after all that's said and done, point one is not out of this game yet. He is responding with a with appropriate measures here, a little push. But look at all the defenses scattered about. This is so hard to push through here. Like the, his best bet, point one's best bet would be scouting ground. And then going for a flank, going for a flank here up north, and then falling into the back lines of the base. That would be his best bet to inflict as a lot, uh, as as much damage as possible. But yeah, didn't happen. Still some power snipes here. Nah, power snipes at this rate are not going to help you all that much. Point one is now again up to a size of the power float. But what he can do is he can always keep the artillery stalling. Because you can always send a single yak. Ooh, Mig. Yes. That's gonna be spicy. You can always just send a single yak. And sure, the single yak is gonna die to the anti air gun. But if he manages to take at least one artillery down and maybe get a nice RNG crash into the infantry blob at the same rate, that's gonna be a big victory plus a time stall. Because you can use the time to. Wow, the flank here. Ha! <laughs> you can utilize the time yourself to get some good stuff in. Oh, the tech server. Completely unguarded. That was like the only vector he was protected from. And there's the SAM site. Just the right appropriate measure. Appropriate countermeasure here. Barely anything dying to the V2s. And yeah, we've got ourselves a push onto the expansion of point one. Who is on two base. He hasn't opted for a third con yard. Oh, it takes so long to dispatch this. What's the vector? Power bombing run is coming in. Wait, what's oh yeah, there it is. Oh, that's unlucky. Maybe he spotted it. No, he's, he was just responding here. That was a, an emergency response. So that power bombing run, I give it a two out of ten. Killed an artillery. Also killed an anti-air gun. Like killing anti-air guns is never too bad. Ooh, the hijacker. You get yo, he's actually gonna steal a medium tank. <laughs> nice little. Let's make a steal. That's uh, that's not German steel, that's the Russian steel. Very good steel here. Uh, Conyard is gonna live. Uh, does he have anything to finish it off with? Yes, he has two MiGs. Completely idle for the time being. Now we're gonna check the assets again. That's gonna be 80k over 63k, but by no... Sh by no stretch of the imagination is this game over on yet. Oh well. <laughs> what was that random power drop, maybe? 
So it's going to be an army versus army clash. And that Nazgul's V2s. Ah, that one is good. The other one was a bit too much to the front. But I think the concave is better. Concave is better for that Nazgul here. So he's going to prevail. And if he gets a shot at this, like, this is only rockets. Just a, a V2 dead, dead center in the middle of this would cost would cost a 0.13k assets. I like... Oh, the MCB has been sniped. Nice. I really like how it's been transitioning over to a uh, to a more mobile V2 Yak combo. It's a very good choice here, in my opinion. That's uh, the choice of the Soviet Connoisseur. Uh, the only thing the Soviet Connoisseur in me would like would be more active MiGs. Right now, they have just been a dead weight. Uh, point ones. Heinz did rearm, really? Not sure about that one. Uh, maybe it's just a bug where they just keep repelling each other. Because Heinz have kind of... Yeah, he's got too, too few helipads. He only has one helipad, as a matter of fact. And what then happens... Eco down. What then happens is that the helipads... There's a mixed tray for the half. Yeah! Uh, the helicopters have a re repulsion area where they repulse other, other helicopters. And that's because... So they can't stack up like mutalisks in StarCraft. We don't want mutalisks stacking in this game. Uh, so... They just keep repelling each other off the helipads. You just need more helipads in order to make it functional again. Ooh, that's a radar dome down, so no more artilleries can come out. He's presumably also gonna get the harvesters here. Nope, Hindfleet coming in. Hindfleet for the cleanup. But he's still gonna take a chunk of damage on the ore truck. The second one, yeah, the second one's gonna stay alive. That was decent. That was decent indeed. Oh, the last spex here uh, for point one, and he throws in the towel, calls GG. But. That's not all, there is a game too, so see you in a sec. Battle control terminated. Battle control initialized. Round two on Beyond Destruction. Give it up for these two indomitable gentlemen here. This is gonna be point one in the left spawning is Ukraine with a little faction swap and net as uh, what amounts to uh, his neighbor country, also is Ukraine. This is gonna be a soft versus soft mirror matchup. Let's see how prevalent thieves are gonna be here. Also, Dog Rush opener for point one. I love it. They have had a couple subtle balance tweaks. So, their running animation has been fixed. They now, uh, they always used to walk like that, but if they now acquire a target, and that's a feature that was transferred over from the original, if they acquire a target, they now use the running animation and gain movement speed, I think like almost 50%. Um, ooh, this engineer is already gonna be able to snack on a dog. It's gonna be a little treat for him, a little feast. Plus, the proper killing animation is now being displayed. Plus, uh, the leap range got uh, leap range got uh, neutered. Oh, <laughs> look at this! But what a good boy, even licking up the blood after tasting a little midnight feast there. A little midnight engineer delight, a little engineer enchilada, if you will. That's been awesome. If he now stutter steps, and stutter stepping has become so good with dogs, it always has been. But they have uh, a minor health buff. Ah. Oh. Too bad, he could have won that engagement as well. But still, as it stands, that's already a good start for point one. Trading trading a dog and a couple of rifles for an NG? Hell yeah, any time of the day. Gonna set your opponent back. Is he really gonna go for the hospital? Is that really worth it? Is that what we've come to? <laughs> I mean, it's gonna give you some real estate there. It's also gonna give you access to the, uh, to the barrels, I guess. But yeah. Nothing too major happening here. Uh, I really like the, the dog fix. So their leap range has been neutered, which means that they can no longer leap from, I think, almost four cells away. It's now only three cells. Two cells. Excuse me. Uh, but proper killing animation now displays. And overall, I'd say it's a buff. Even though it was a, a mixed bag in reality. But it's going to be a buff uh, to their consistency mainly. Because they no longer can go all Pac-Man on your, on your infantry. Which used to be a really funny sight to behold, but it didn't make any sense in terms of like... Lore, in-universe, and game mechanics. Uh, because the, the leapfrogging got neutered, and... It got traded off for some more stable, like, traits you can now... You can assign your own unit as a target and it's gonna speed them up. That's pretty interesting used to be a thing in the original already. Uh, Grenade is coming out, that's gonna be a Grand APC as a follow-up. I, I guess probably just as a 
way to snipe out any oil derricks that had been captured, but... Spoiler alert, Ned Nuskull didn't go for any. Because his engineer got snagged somehow. It somehow disappeared along the way. I don't know what happened to Comrade's engineer. It's been a very tough night though. Many, many engineers disappear. Trust me, I'm an engineer. What the fuck did just happen here? Uh, Alright. Well, that's gonna be Service Depot already. So that's gonna leave point one a bit behind here. Like, maybe 20 seconds. Uh, point one was busy. Yeah, building a third ref. That was that was his game plan. There's only two ref built for Net Naskul. Which is going to provide him with less income in the early to mid. But eventually a double ref, like a triple ref is not entirely necessary. No, Net Naskul has got a flame target. You know, this is not gonna do much. Coaxial MG doesn't do much. Oh, and he double clicked. That sometimes happens. When you double click um, undeploy, you send your units in and then you click onto the APC again. So it unloads your Grens immediately, which is a bit annoying, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. And first engineer out for Net School now. He's trying again. Second engineer. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. I do vividly remember that one. So let's focus on something else right now. Let's focus on the five harvesters here. Over s oh, six already out for net. Right. Okay, yeah, that was it. The APC went in and just found three random engineers. And at first everyone assumed this must have been a misclick, right? You're a, you're a, you don't just randomly build like three engineers. <laughs> but turns out there was a plan to that. There was a plan all along. Point one has gotten his MCV deployed here, or rally pointed, and the uh, the expansion for Net Nuskull is already out. Plus, but he had little assets, little in the way of assets. So his first heavy tank coming online here, and obviously due to the APC rush, point one a bit behind. But he's gotten a proper expansion out as well, and I think this is not going to be contested from Net Nuskull anytime soon. Yeah, and now then I saw him still frantically spamming engineers, and I was like. This man has a plan. <laughs> that was interesting to say the least. I think that's already uh, three engineers in the APC. Uh, and the reason why this happened, or the reason why he built those, is because along with all the other uh, changes from the engineer, being that he now doesn't, um, that he now banishes after capturing, he also got a, a capture time decrease to I think it's eight or seven seconds now. Which is considerably down from 10, and I think for now, at least in the playtest, they still retain their um, their stun lock ability on on enemy uh, buildings that they try capturing. So, if you capture an MCV and your opponent doesn't have another MCV which can resume production, this MCV is just uh, is just going to get captured. Good point one has a sizable army here, and this APC. Keep in mind, it was revealed was definitely revealed on uh, on account of those three rifles, who probably won't live to tell the tale though. But they've told them we via intercom, so I guess that's fine. Wait, did he now capture- he did capture the hospital indeed. I completely missed that the first time around. And tracking bazooka shots, making minced meats. There, there's some more engineer, engineer enchilada for you guys. That was just rough. That was three engineers, an APC, was basically half an army down the drain. And at that stage, it just doesn't look good for Net Nuskull anymore. But playtesting for the sake of playtesting. I guess it was just a was a, vali a valiant attempt. Nice AU from AOE from the flame tower. But all the eco has been raised here. On the other side, we're seeing a count push onto the construction yard of point one. And that was, I think, yeah, that was his third con yard, so not his natural expansion there. Deadlock will be focused down, and now it's time for the, uh, for the Konyar to die. Konyar taking a lot of damage, and point one soldiers, not all of them are actually doing anything. Many of them just sitting around idly. One last, one last salvo, yep. This MCV has been reduced to rubble, and now he does have a forward production point, but Point one doesn't really have an eco expansion here, so he's not mining from the gems. This was not the income spike he was hoping for. 
Plus, he was running dry in most of his mines there. So, mostly running dry here. Still got a bit of some specs of eco left. Yeah, still a sizable chunk of eco left here. Net Nazgul's eco is so low at that point, he's gotten like technically two here. One and another one. That's. If you're being generous, that's five harvesters. Five mining ones. So, yeah. Pretty, uh. Pretty big eco losses there being sustained by Net Nazgul, especially when uh, his two Otraks got killed earlier. And point one does have all the time in the world to rebuild. He's still got a second con yard out. He could even base push onto this now. I, I like the no base push zone here, by the way. This map was created by by point one. So technically he does have moment or by NA? No, sorry, by NA. My bad. So no home advantage here. Another harvester being raised. And the second wall got pulled off the line. Wait! Two harvesters died here. There used to be three on this patch. And that was a really smart move by point one. He's just separating his forces, splitting them up. And the smaller chunk is trading it out with this army, while the bigger chunk is actually going into the main. <coughs> Excuse me. There's been a counter harvester snipe, so this is a really econ-centric game here and, and focused on eco raids as well. That's pretty good. That's how you're supposed to play the game here. So yeah, lots of damage has been a lot of damage has been sustained by Net Nazgul. It's not looking too hard for him. Another harvester down the drain. And at that rate. So I one thing he could have done here, that point one was to, he was too gun shy on pulling the trigger on the conyard. He could easily have sniped the conyard there. Instead he went for the power. And now he's trying to get the airfield. Airfield getting dangerously low. This APC got some crushes. Some. Yeah. A moderate amount of crushes. The airfield is still alive. Kill it. Hans gets a Flammenwerfer. Ooh, this needs to be torched. Against Ukraine, you never want to leave airfields alive. Even if your opponent still has a radar dome. And you can see more engineers, by the way. So even if your opponent still has a radar though, it is smart to kill the uh, to kill the airfields, even if you can rebuild them easily. The reason being, you reset all the cooldowns. And then you're gonna have cooldown advantage on para bombs, uh, spy plane, and the and the para drop. So that's a pretty pretty big thing. Just oh, that Nazgul sold it anyway. So yeah, <laughs> so much for that. He should have kept that one alive because really that was his only shot getting back into the game via para bombs. Right now, not looking too spicy for him. Point one has re-established his base here. He went... No! He went for a fourth Conyard after he's lost his third. So a pretty expensive build here. 8k into Conyards, but that's fine for him. He is so far ahead. He has sniped so much eco and... Net Nazgul needed to, to float most of his money into new refineries and new harvesters because he kept losing them over and over again. That was just... Yeah. That's just how you do it. That's how you keep your opponent uh, in, a, in a check situation until you finally set them checkmate in one big move. One big all in with all the rooks. Look at all the rooks lined up here. And the queen can sit back. Ooh, speaking of queens, tech center. Hell yeah. We're going to see some soft tech out of this match and I don't distinctly remember whether or not there was an influx of tier three late game tech there. But it doesn't look to be the case, because right now this looks like a game ender. This is all the rooks moving forward towards the queen, uh, towards the king here. I, I call checkmate in two. Checkmate in two moves. First move, all track down. Net Nazgul could have pulled his harvesters there, could have been a bit better on his uh, pullback micro. Always pull out. PSA. Yeah, third all track down. That was basically his entire eco lines. How much, how much does he have left? One harvester. That's literally his eco lifeline right there. Yeah. Point one just finding all the snipes that he needed. He's still, he's still mining the gems. He's on like seven harvesters. Three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Excuse me. And that was a valiant attempt here from Ned Nazgul. Trying to get back into the game via some captures. And it almost would have worked there. I remember. Okay, so there's the airfield. Stealing the airfield. But this one rifleman. He just didn't want the comeback to happen. Yeah. And 
that does hold selling out. Getting a couple civilians here, and that's gonna be the angry mob is the last thing he's gonna produce before he's gonna tap out of this game, I'd imagine. Yeah, that's brutal. V2 tech has come online, so maybe he, that can salvage it for him, but I doubt so. I really doubt he's gonna have uh, much gas left in the tank here because he needs so much. He needs to be for all his equal lines and Chi Chi being called because being on one harvester, you know it's over. Your opponent is just gonna outscale you. He had tier 3 unlocked, he had, uh, he had all of his mammoth tanks unlocked, so yeah, that was over. So, that leaves us as a, at a comfortable 1 1 from the comfort of our own homes, and well, I'm going to have to uh, postpone the third match until next week, because I think match number three was a really long one, and also a more intricate one, so stay hyped, we'll cast that one next week. You can also see how the about the high checker balance, like even though high checkers haven't been prevalent in this, it's just so nice to see them being built now. And also so nice uh, to see allied players being forced into the defense against high checkers. Just building a couple rifles ar around your eco lines has become uh, the staple for allies versus Soviet matchups. Alright, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Five aces out. Battle control terminated.